gardeners and homesteaders. I hope everybody's having a great day. Just as suspected, we've had to make some adjustments into our garden as far as planting dates. So I'm gonna go around and show you a little bit about what we've been planting. Uh, we've been very busy and the weather is just doing what it does. It's heartbreak zone. I mean, what can I say? There seems to be more going on in the garden day by day. And my intention was to get all of these old hoses and stuff cleaned up, but that's not really gonna work out very well right now. First and foremost, we gotta get our stuff planted in the ground. So it's been, the temperature has been going in a swing of like 30 to 40 degrees a day. And that's one thing in the spring, it spells one thing and that is bolt season. So if we don't stay on top of it, we're gonna get some bolting. And I've been looking at the forecast and I've been watching it and I've seen that it's, you know, we're still gonna get nice, decent weather, but it's supposed to cool off a little bit, but we're not getting any freezing temps for like 10 more days at least, which means we're probably not gonna get very cold from here on out. So anything that we plant that we have planned appropriately for that can take a cold, we should be good to put it in. So we're working on that right now. And we've been planting a lot of things in the garden in the past week. And it kind of had to happen a little bit faster. So I had to be flexible and make adjustments. When this bed here, we actually sowed three, no, four rows of carrots right here to kind of finish out this row. And then we came in and then the last quarter of the bed, we put radishes in. And I know I didn't, I said I wasn't gonna grow any more radishes, but I just, I couldn't help myself. And I really wanted to get this soil working and activated. So we're waiting on that to come up, but it should happen relatively soon, considering that we've had all of this warm weather. And I mean, when it comes time for a seed to germinate, it doesn't take long. I mean, you get them going and boom, they're gonna start taking off if the temperature is right. And I feel like, between 60 and 70 for this time of year is like prime temperature to get some of these plants up and growing from seed. So we're gonna, we took advantage of it. And my goal was to go piece by piece by piece and get stuff in, but we couldn't really do that because in my experience in zone 8A in North Carolina, there's my zone for the video, um, it, it can happen really fast. So I know in February, I should have decently cool weather all the way up until April. So that'll give me two to three months roughly before I really have to start worrying about things bolting. And even then things still bolt. It's so, it drives me so crazy sometimes. In this pot, I did exactly what I said I was gonna do in a couple videos ago. I put a broccoli right in the middle and then there's still this kohlrabi back here, but I came back through and just put a couple um, rutabagas in. So we're gonna wait for this guy right here to come up a little bit better. And with this warmer weather, it should, but I just left a couple seedlings out here in case I'm gonna fill in an area or something. I was just kind of keeping an eye on it and seeing what's going on. This bed here has been kind of a mess. I've been waiting for things to kind of get in order. And I wanted to just start my plan of going row by row by row, but I didn't wanna waste what I have growing. So I came through and I put all of my spinach right here. So I put three rows of spinach right in this square foot. And then I put a row of cabbage right here. So I did leave my mustard in there because I really enjoy it. And when the cabbage starts to overgrow it, I will remove the mustard, but we're not gonna rush to do that right now. And then back here on this final row, we're gonna just fill in all of these little gaps with lettuce and stuff like that. And I can't remember what I was gonna put on this row, but I definitely needed to check my plan because it is time. I mean, you know, this collard is screaming right now. So it's, it's just, it's going bonkers. Hey, and before I forget, let us know what's going on in your garden in the comments below. It'll help a lot of people and I'm interested to know how your gardens are doing or what you're doing in them. Hopefully, like with the Brussels sprouts and stuff like that, that have been sitting kind of dormant for the winter, usually what happens is they really get activated when we start getting this warm weather and then they'll just kind of explode with growth. And we're really hoping that's the case. I mean, at least we think it is. Now the spinach in this back row right here, I'm not the best spinach grower. I have a hard time growing it. This year I planted Sun Angel spinach. It's actually a hybrid and it's supposed to do better in warmer weather. So we'll see how that goes. That's not really been, 
my experience with spinach growing down here in the south has not been very pleasant. When I lived up north in zone six, it was so easy. I mean, you couldn't hardly stop it from growing, but here I have a really hard time getting it to germinate. So I'm hoping these cooler weather will actually help these seeds germinate because spinach doesn't like to germinate when it's really above like 70, 75. So like today is gonna be 77. But the benefit is if I look, this soil, I mean, if I stick my finger in it, it's still cool because we haven't had repeated weeks of warm weather. So it should help it. And when it cools and we're gonna get like three days of rain, thank goodness. So that'll help with that as well. Hill in the back of this bed, they're, I think they're pretty much established now. We put them in about a week ago and we're starting to see some actual growth on it. I mean, you can see some new leaves coming out. So I think that it's safe to say that it is established. And the next order of business on these is to actually come in and trim, like see that leaf and it'll come off in a couple days. I just don't want to take too much off of them right now. I want to give them all the opportunity they have to get energy to get going, but they're starting to go. And then we put in some of the turnips from the greenhouse that the possum flipped over. I just put some in to see what they would do here as well. And then I came back and reseeded around it. So we'll see what comes out of that. Now this row is gonna end up being bok choy, but we're gonna wait about a month before we put that in. Being the best bok choy grower in the world, as a matter of fact, not ever growing bok choy successfully. I know that it's very sensitive to cool, warm swings. So as we get more into an evening out, as much as you can say in the spring here, then we're gonna plant it. But for right now, we're just gonna let it go and see what we can do. Now the onions back here, these guys, we put them in, they had a little bit of transplant shock. They've just kind of sat dormant. And then I came out here and I was looking at them and I noticed something. See the yellowing here? That is an indication that it needed some fertilizer. So I actually came out here today and gave it some fish fertilizer. So it smells horrible. I can't wait to get away from this bed. But um, that should really help it kind of activate and then get a jump on it. And all of this here is alfalfa pellets, if you were wondering. So I put those down and let them just break in naturally over the season. Uh, I'll do it before my next planting as well. When these are almost done, it's just kind of like an added benefit. It's not really fast. Really like a fertilizer per se. It's more like a soil building amendment. So I just add it into all of my gardens. Um, throughout the year by the, you know, couple cups per garden bed. The recording of this video, it's just before Valentine's Day. I'm still waiting on the pieces to kind of wrap up the in-ground watering system um, over here. So we've, I, plant, I had to plant earlier than I wanted. I wanted to wait just before the rain to plant. But as I came through and I looked, I realized like with the temperature and everything, it just really needed to be planted now to get things established, especially if we get a couple days of rain. And I'm gonna be probably removing this plastic. I might do that today actually, just get it all dried up and get it put away. It's kind of, it's really in the way bad. I mean, you know what pisses me off? I came out here to work on this watering system the other day and I was not happy about it because it's just kind of been a month long process and I'm tired and whatever. And I was walking around and I stepped in this. Dude, that water right there, I stepped right in it and it just went all in my shoe. Pissed me off. The summertime, I wouldn't care about it, but yeah, just right now, I just, it wasn't what I needed. But anyways, I digress rapidly. So this bed right here, is reserved for potatoes. So we took the broccoli out and we're gonna let this cabbage get all the sun it needs and just let that do its thing until it's time for potatoes. Hopefully we'll get a small cabbage out. We might not, I don't know. Um, we'll see, but the potatoes are gonna take precedence over anything for this bed, especially since I'm giving this one to my son. So we'll do that. Um, this bed right here, I actually put in a row of daikon radishes and then I believe I put in another row of just regular radishes behind it or turnips, one of the two. I can't remember now. We'll find out soon. And then back behind that, 
all of these new plants. These are all rutabagas that I put in here. So, and you can see I left a six pack out here just in case I need to add some more or something. Um, I'd really like to water this right now and I'll water it by hand today just to get it going, but I'd really like to have the watering system going and really get it fed. Did find this little guy out here. So this is a little potato left over that just grew in the fall. So we might try and get that to sprout a little bit and see what happens. You never know. Maybe do a little mixture in a bed. Who knows? I know there's going to be some more potatoes underneath these cabbages. And when I say some more potatoes, I mean like two or three, but hey, you know what? It's fun. Have a smorgasbord of potatoes, right? This bed back here is going to be the broccoli lettuce, broccoli lettuce bed. So we went ahead and we planted all of our broccoli in it and I wanted to do it in stages. So I couldn't do that. So what I try to do is pick some smaller broccoli plants and some larger ones, and hopefully they can kind of come periodically and I don't get them all at once. See, in fact, we did plant all of our broccoli into this row here, and then we'll put a row of lettuce right here. And then we put more broccoli here, and then we're gonna put another row of lettuce here. And so we're gonna leave these cabbages as long as we can, which probably won't be too much longer. We got a little head on this one, but this one got stunted really bad. So we don't have high hopes for it. Uh, we'll get a meal out of it though. And so one of the big benefits about starting my own seeds has been that when I start them, I always plant extra, but then I'm like, oh, I have these extra seeds. So what can I do? So then I came over here to the containers and I started adding stuff periodically to them. And um, I didn't do anything crazy over here yet. I still need to get a lot of soil for these two big pots right here. Um, but I did put a cabbage in this one and then I put a broccoli in this small pot and another broccoli here. So we'll see how they do. Um, they're smaller pots, but I didn't want to just kind of throw them out right now. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and fill up these two bigger pots, grow this stuff out as much as possible, and then dump that soil into those pots to help, you know, help with the cost of filling it up. But everything is, you know, it looks good now because it just got planted. We'll see. And it's going to be hard to keep this area watered this summer. I'm not putting any kind of irrigation here. So I am going to put a hose out here, but it'll just kind of be one of those things that you kind of have to deal with in the meantime. First year growing peas throughout the winter, uh, they grew, but they didn't really come to fruition. And when I had the white mold popping up in these beds, I came out here and noticed that we in fact had some die off happening. So I decided to just go ahead and pull it and start it like I normally do. And since we're gonna get all of this rain, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna soak my peas this year. I've never done it before, but I'm gonna go ahead and soak some peas. And I'm gonna plant on this trellis, this trellis, and then this trellis back here on this side. And then I'm gonna put peas on that trellis right there. And so we can try and get you know, some peas going. I want to try some snap peas this year. And then these two trellises, we're not going to put anything on. We're going to save those. So we have plenty of time to put our cucumbers and stuff in like that this year. I kind of jacked around last year and past two years and tried to plant my cucumbers later than I normally do. And it, I think the heat just kind of got to them really fast. So I'm going to try and just put them in like I used to when I was really successful with them and uh, just go from there. But it's all about trial and error and just kind of working through it. And for me, that's what I enjoy about gardening. I love just trying to like figure out the timings and just kind of maximizing the growth inside of my garden. I brought some seedlings out today to kind of give them their first fish fertilizer. Um, it's they're long overdue, but we're kind of waiting for a nice day to do it. And it's supposed to be a little bit overcast today as the rain moves in. So we wanted to take advantage of it. And we brought out all of our top row of seedlings. Now I don't know if it was a mistake, but we did all of our lettuce. We got a couple of broccolis here and some cilantro. And these are the ones I really wanted to fertilize. And then we have all of our peppers here and then our bok choy on this one here. And so I really wanted to get all of these out and get them going. Um, I know the peppers, they've got a long way to go. And actually in the past couple days, we've really started to get some true leaves coming out. So that's a good sign. 
that's just from that fertilizer you saw me add to them. Everything started growing just that fast. And now that we've given it the fish fertilizer. And so the issue is, and this is a bad issue. Uh, I was sitting in the old rocking chair for this one. I looked at the weather and I saw that it's not supposed to be super bad for the next 10 days or so. And I made the decision after I gave them their first fertilizer that I'm going to go ahead and plant my lettuce soon. I think I'm going to, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to try and harden off this lettuce. Um, technically right now it's in the process of doing it because it's in the shade. I may just end up putting it back in the house through this rainstorm and then bringing it out. But I want to go ahead and get it because we eat a lot of lettuce in our house and we can plant a lot of lettuce in our garden. I mean, in that one eight foot row over there, we can plant 32 lettuce plants. So, I mean, we, we eat a lot of lettuce, but I don't want to put it out and I won't want to fertilize it and then harden it off on the same day. It's just, that's not a good, it's not a good action to do because it's like I said in the other video, it's going to push growth. But at the same time, it's going to be trying to get comfortable in the harsh sun that, you know, can damage it. So it's going to push this fresh growth and have a hard time bringing it back. So I'm probably going to bring it in for about two to three days. And then next week, I'm going to start hardening it off. And even though there's broccoli in the same pot, in the same tray, it's going to be, it'll have to sit in there longer. But it's totally the perfect temperature right now to have the broccoli out. And once you bring it outside, it grows a lot faster than outside. Cause I mean, the sun's just that much stronger. So I think that's what we're going to do. Like I said, it wasn't the best idea to fertilize at first, but whatever. Um, we've got a whole nother 72 cells worth of lettuce in there. And we're probably going to start another either 72 or 162 cell tray of lettuce. Um, like I said, we eat a lot of lettuce and we sell a lot of lettuce plants. So it'll work out pretty good. And I mean, the thing is for us is we don't do cut and come again. We just harvest a whole plant. So as one comes out, we put one in. As one comes out, we put one in. And then that way we can kind of keep it going as long as possible. And generally, I can grow lettuce with ease here, depending on how much of the yo-yo season we have. Um, if the temperatures stay relatively steady, we can grow lettuce up until about mid-May, maybe early June, maybe. So, and then we can, we've definitely had years where by April it's all bolted. So we're going to keep trying to just keep it in the ground, keep it going as long as we have space for it allotted in our garden. And if not, then we'll add it into pots and stuff like that because that's going to help keep it going much further. Goodbye.